At MedFacts, our priority is to educate and inform on topics such as pain relief, sports performance, injury rehab, nutrition, antioxidants, electron supplementation, and electrotherapy. We carry a complete line of electrotherapy devices and accessories, including interferential, TENS, ultrasound, muscle stimulators, electrodes, and more. We are excited about being on the cutting edge of electrotherapy research. In this video, I want to talk to you about the basics of life, which is atoms or atoms and their components. Let's start off first just giving you a basic understanding of how plants grow, of how humans grow, of how we treat sickness, how we prevent sickness, how we heal. You have to look at the atom and its components. Now, in a simplistic answer, basically we have an atom and it has P for protons, N for neutrons. The proton has a positive charge. And I'm just going to draw a few little around here and let's put as a couple of protons in, a neutron in, a proton in, and a neutron in. Anyway, that's your basis. Now, outside of the nucleus, remember we have a positive charge. And I will tell you, for those of you that are watching this video, an interesting question I have not seen answered yet, is you've got protons with a positive charge. Remember, positives repel. What keeps them together? And of all my looking around, I have yet to find anyone, I haven't yet to find the answer. I'm sure it's out there. I just don't understand what the answer is. Now, as we go through this, and let me show you, the next thing we have is we have an orbit. And this is where our electrons are. Now, on an electron, it has a negative charge. But the first orbit can only have two electrons with negative charge. Now, let me give you a perspective of what we're talking about. If this were a pecan. And it's that big. You know what a pecan looks like. That first orbit with two electrons is approximately five miles away. So there's a tremendous amount of space within an atom. But just helping you have a perspective of what we're talking. Alright, that's the inner shell two electrons. That's all it can hold. Now, let me show you how this works. Okay, then we have another shell. Now, on your second shell and every subsequent shell, you can have a maximum of eight electrons. Let's see, I can make the, keep it all the same color. So, I'm going to have an electron here. I'm going to have an electron here electron here, an electron here, I got four, five, six, seven, eight. That's all you can have. It can't hold any more. And remember, these are all negative charges. So you've got a repulsion going on. These are positive. You've got an attraction to a negative. Now, a better way to understand this, and let me show you, and this is just one of the laws of physics. Pretend you are working a roller coaster. That's this roller coaster and scares you to death. Blah, blah, blah. There's your roller coaster going all around. You're in charge of the paying customers, and we've got a bunch of customers lined up here that want to get on the roller coaster. And you're going to walk them through, and here come the cars they're going to ride on on the roller coaster. Well, this car has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight seats. Well, when you let the people in, you can only let in eight people. 
Simple reason. I don't want anybody hanging on outside of this thing running around a roller coaster. Kill them. So we get eight filled and we send it on its way. That's one of the shells of an electron. Now, the next car comes up. Somebody over here was willing to pay a special higher price because they only wanted to be with their girlfriend, their fiance, whatever. There's only two seats. You can't put three in. You, you have to put two in because you've got people standing in line. So you put them in so there's two. That's always the inner shell or the inner orbit around the nucleus. And so we send that out. Then here comes the another car. And all the cars after this all have eight seats. But now we've been filling up cars and we don't have that many people standing in line. So we can only fill up four seats. Put a person there, a person there. These two want to sit beside each other on the back. We got four empty, four filled seats. We're not going to sit there and hold it. We're also going to send that car on our roller coaster out. That is the way it works atomically with electrons and atoms on their shells. But that's a concept that we have to deal with. Now, the only thing that we are basically interested in is on an atom. There's your nucleus. I'm just putting nucleus this time. There's your inner shell. We got two. Here's an outer shell. And this time, we're going to have some problems. The problem we're going to have this time is we've got one electron, two, three, four, five. Well, wait a minute. We need eight. Well, no we don't. We don't need eight. If we had eight, we would have a stable atom. What has happened right here is by only having five, that means if there were another atom over here, try to keep my colors the same, there's another atom, and this atom has its two electrons, and then in its next shell, it, on, it has one, two, three electrons. Now, for you chemistry people, you can go to the periodic table and go through the elements very easily. And for many of you that are watching and are not, interest, or not interested or not, don't pay a lot of attention to the chemistry, this is the periodic table. And these are actually elements that I'm describing. But they're atoms. Now, what happens here? You've got three in the outer shell. The outer shell we call the valence. This is what you're interested in. It's the valence. That is nothing but the outer shell. We could have an atom here. And one shell, two shell, three shells, four shells. We're always interested in this outer one, the valence. That's what electricity is about. Now, if these atoms were close to each other, one of the things that would happen is this one is less stable and it would be easier. This guy needs two more electrons. This guy over here needs four more electrons because it's only got three. It needs five more, sorry. <laughs> needs five more electrons to give it eight. This one needs two more. Two, three, four. Three more. Three more. My gosh. Now you know why I wasn't a math major. But if it has three more, it's stable. What is it easier to do for this one to gain five or this one to gain three? It's easier to gain three. So what may very well happen now is this guy loses all three of his electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whew, I can still count. That's good. Let's move some electrons away. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that there are, will now be no electrons because this guy might decide to share an electron with another atom and that can be done. But this electron now becomes very unstable. This electron is what we call stable because it is 
field its orbits. Now, in the world, and this is going to take you a little bit, but when you look at the world of nutrition, and one of my videos is specific to multiple sclerosis, mitochondria, and Dr. Terry Walls and the role of nutrition and functional electrical stimulation in trying to pr retard progressive multiple sclerosis and regain control. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and nail. That's where it is. You can see right here, you can click on that or come back and click, and that will take you to the multiple sclerosis video uh, about the work of Dr. Terry Walls. All right, but what we're back here is now that stable. This is unstable. In the nutrition world, this is a free radical. In the world of staying healthy, this is what's called an antioxidant. What happens here is in disease processes and in injury, when we have an abundance of free radicals and that persists for time, these guys, and basically a free radical, let me pull this off. Albert St. Gorky, basically a colleague of his, and Albert St. Gorky, a lot of his work was really in botany uh, and chemistry, and that was his stronger thing. But Albert St. Gorky asked one time, he says, describing to one of his friends who was a botanist, he says, can you tell me what's your definition of on pH, acidity, acid, and alkaline? Because you can take a plant, and I can plant this plant into the dirt. There's a pack of dirt. I can have every known nutrient that this plant needs to live. There's our plant coming up. There's branch, branch. One of my leaves, another of my leaves. Up, branch, branch. Put another pretty flower on top. Now that plant, the way it takes all of this food and nutrients that are inside the dirt is it has some roots. And these roots have these little things called root hairs. Well, the nutrient matter that's necessary for that plant is in that soil. But the nutrient matter has a charge. It either has more electrons than protons. So what do we have? It has a negative charge. Some more have a positive charge because they have more protons than electrons. That's the electrical resting state of what this plant needs. These root hairs have to be able to have the right charge to pull up what they need. If they don't, the plant cannot get what it needs and the plant dies. Now, that process I like to talk about, if we told somebody to walk across the Sahara Desert and we didn't give them any water, they would die. If they went across the Sahara Desert and we had a big pipe, 12 inch pipe full of water, one foot underneath them in the dirt, but we didn't have a spigot to get the water out of, the person dies. If we put a spigot every mile, the person lives and the person is able to get across the Sahara Desert. That plant has what it needs here, but it's got to have the right electrical charge to pick it up. Now, Albert St. Gorky's comment was, what's the difference in pH and acid and alkalinity? It was a simple answer. The ability to take or give an electron. That is the difference in pH. That is also the thing you would see in Dr. Robert Becker on non-unions. That is also what you see that goes on with bed sores. That is also what happens when you shoot electricity into the body. 
you dramatically, because you're flushing in electrons, you dramatically change the charges on the different atoms which form molecules. Now, that is one of the bases of how we're beginning to understand the role of electricity. Now, if your head is like mine, when I would watch these videos and do this research, it starts hurting. And after a while, you say, you know what? I've had enough. So let's cut this video short here. I'll pick up on another video and further explain what we are seeing today. Thanks for watching. And please, if you have any questions or comments or anything I say that's wrong, there's a reason this is up there on YouTube. Just tell us, because our purpose is not for me to tell you anything. The purpose is for us to have a discussion and see if we can't collectively come together with a better approach to preventing illness and a better approach to healing people. Again, thanks for watching. Be sure to comment.